Well, it's really good to be back with you. I just want to point out today that the picture that Sherry has brought to us is if you are heading just out of Leavenworth, Washington, uh, those are the Cascades, some of the most rugged part of the Cascades. Absolutely beautiful. And what Sherry said that she likes about this picture is that it is both full autumn colors manifested and it almost looks like a little touch of winter in the background. Uh, so thank you, Sherry, for this amazingly beautiful picture. Uh, it just one of those lovely places that you could just sit and be there for forever and just enjoy. It's just like living in the Swiss Alps. So again, thanks to Sherry. We are in the Gospel of John. We're chapter 11. Uh, I have chapter 11 broken up into three parts. So the title of this one is Jesus Loses His Very Good Friend. If you read the text, there's a portion of the text that says uh, that Jesus loved Lazarus. And that word love is the word for philo or philos, which is the love one has for a brother or a sister. It's family love. So I titled this, Jesus Loses His Very Good Friend. And according to John, maybe one of his very best friends. So let's jump into the story. Uh, join me as we read through it. It says in verse 1, Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was the Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. So the sister sent word to him, saying, Lord, behold, your good friend is sick. So the phrase, it was the Mary that anointed, John wanted to clarify which Mary, not Mary the mother, but Mary who anointed Jesus with ointment. Uh, that, that's kind of a very important point to make here. Now let's continue on with verse 4. But when Jesus heard this, he said, This sickness is not, I'm going to repeat this again, This sickness is not to end in death, but for the glory of God. Now please make a note of that. Continuing on, so that the Son of God may be glorified by it. In other words, the events that are going to happen in regards to this message about Lazarus being sick, Jesus is already informing those listening that this has something to do with glorifying God. Now, that doesn't mean that God made Lazarus sick. Please do not make that interpretation. Let me continue with verse 5. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he then stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go to Judea again. Now, hang on, this is going to get really intense. The disciples said to him, Rabbi or teacher, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day, and if anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world? But anyone who walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. So Jesus is saying, yeah, hey, we're going to go there. There's, there's a time to walk in the light. Walk with me in the light, Jesus says to his disciples. Notice verse 11. This he said, and after that he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. Please remember that phrase. But I go so that I may awaken him out of sleep. Now, sometimes I worry a little bit about the disciples. Please notice verse 12. The disciples then said to him, Lord, if he's falling asleep, he'll recover. Now, Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he was speaking of literal sleep. So Jesus then said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And in verse 15, it says, And I am glad for your sake that I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Now, if you just think about this for just a moment. So what has Jesus just said? He said, Lazarus is asleep. The disciples misunderstood. He says, no, he's dead. Now let's go to him. I, I wish I could see the disciples' face when Jesus said this. It still has to be somewhat uh, 
just a little complex. Uh, let's just continue the story and, and see how, how it unfolds. Now, in John 11, Jesus refers to Lazarus as being asleep. Uh, this would be a common way to describe death. You see, death is understood by Jesus in the Jewish community is not how we view death today. Uh, Ecclesiastes 9, 5, and 6, it says, For the living know they will die, but the dead do not know anything, nor have they any longer a reward, for their memory is forgotten. Indeed, their love, their hate, their zeal have already perished, and they will no longer have a share in all that is done under the sun. So, when, when we talk about how Jesus sees death, it isn't like the contemporary church and many Christians see death today. He saw death as this thing of the ceasing of life. And, and please notice how it's described here in Ecclesiastes. The dead don't know anything. Their love, their hate, their zeal have already perished. And they're not going to share in all that is done under the sun. So I just want to say this is really important. If you think dead relatives are appearing to you, wouldn't that be a contradiction to this passage? Because if they have nothing to share in that is done under the sun, then wouldn't that have to be a different kind of spirit that's appearing? Just saying. Now, death, as understood today by Christians, is based on Greco-Roman paganism, that man is born immortal. The idea that man is already immortal contradicts the Bible. Only God is. That's at the bottom of this slide. It says in 1 Timothy 1.17, Now to the king eternal, immortal, invisible, to God who alone is wise, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Immortality is received when a person accepts Jesus as Lord and Savior. Not every man and every woman has immortality. It is only a gift in Christ. Notice Psalms 146.4 right in the middle of this slide. His spirit departs, speaking of the man who dies or woman, he returns to the earth. In that day, his very thoughts perish. Those are important texts for us to recognize and to remember. Now getting back to John 11, it says, Therefore Thomas, who was called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, Let us go, so that we may die with him, with Jesus. So the word Didymus means that Thomas was a twin. Uh, to die with Lazarus speaks to the danger and the threat against Jesus by the Pharisees because they wanted to kill him. So Thomas says, okay, let's go up there and die with Jesus. They want to kill him. We might as well all go and die. I mean, you understand they call him Doubting Thomas, right? That, that's for a reason. And, and you get a sense of kind of the darkness of Thomas here. Uh, one of the, I think, more unique disciples of the Twelve. Notice verse 17. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now keep in mind, this is in the Middle East. This is equatorial climate. It is hot. It is not like here in the Northwest. Notice verse 18. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off. It's actually 1.7 miles. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. Martha, therefore, when she heard that Jesus was coming, went to meet him. But Mary stayed at the house. Martha then said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. So Martha believed in the resurrection. And I'm going to tell you there were two schools of thought in the Jewish community. The Pharisees believed in the resurrection, and the Sadducees believed that when you died, that's all there was to life. That was, you got your reward here. When you died, it was over. Not so unlike Christians today. Continuing on now in verse 25, and Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? And she said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, 
the Son of God, even he who comes into the world. Well, that's the end of our presentation today. I need to pause right here. Uh, I just want to take you to our, our closing picture today. Uh, this is just one of those Northern California beaches here on the west coast of the United States. And occasionally, Sherry will catch a picture with the folks just enjoying nature and the things around it. And this is just one of those lovely days. It, it is fallish. You can see that folks are wearing their jackets. It's a little bit cool. But I just want to say, Sherry, thank you for capturing these stories for us. Uh, beautiful pictures. We are right in the middle of this chapter. You need to hang on because it's going to get more interesting and more intense as we move through it. Thank you. Blessings. Take care now. Bye-bye.